I'm Ate, your student nurse, and you are? Stephanie Milesha. How would you like me to call you? Steph na lang po. Okay, so for today, we are going to assess your eye structure and visual acuity. I need you to stay calm because this will serve as your um, information about the current status of your eyes. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Okay, great, ma'am. So I'm here now at the patient's room. I wash my hands, I done the non sterile gloves, and provide the privacy of the patient. Okay, ma'am, so I want you to answer some quick questions about your history. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Okay. Does any of your family member have a diabetes? Mom. Okay. How about high blood? Mom. Any eye surgery? Mom. Injury? Mom. Uh, disease? Mom. Okay. Um, when was your last visit to an ophthalmologist or doctor of the eye? I never visited. Oh, I see. Do you use any medication in your eyes? Mom. Okay, last month, do you wear any eyeglass? No. Contact lens? No. Okay, Miss Steph, I will now inspect your eyes. Would that be okay with you? Yes. So first is inspect the eyebrows for hair distribution and alignment. Also, for skin quality and movement. And allow the patient to raise or move her eyebrows. Could you raise your eyebrows for me, ma'am? Okay, thank you for that. Next is inspect the eyelashes for evenness, distribution, and direction of the curl. Okay, equally distributed. And the eyelashes is curled slightly outwards. Okay, thank you for that, ma'am. Next is inspect the eyelids for surface characteristics, position in relation to the cornea, ability to blink, and frequency in blinking. Also inspect the lower eyelid while the client's eyes are closed. Okay, ma'am. Can you blink for me? Thank you. Close your eyes. Okay. Then, inspect the bulbar conjunctiva for color, texture, and the presence of lesions. Okay, ma'am. Can you look up for me? And also, I will look for the color of the sclera. Thank you. Then, next is inspect and palpate the lacrimal duct. Then, also inspect and palpate the lacrimal sac and the nasolacrimal duct. Okay, ma'am. Thank you for that. So, to assess each pupil's direct and consensual reaction to the light, inspect the cornea for, for clarity and texture, and ask the client to look straight uh, ahead and hold a pen light on an oblique angle to the eye and move the light slowly across the corneal surface. Okay, ma'am, I will turn off the light and I will assess your consensual reaction to the light. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Okay, ma'am, could you look straight? Thank you for that. So, to assess each pupil's reaction to accommodation, hold a object 10, 10 cm away from the nose bridge of the patient and instruct the patient to look at the tip of the object that you're holding and then look at the far object. Okay, Miss Steph, I want you to look at the tip of the object that I'm holding and then after that, I want you to look at the wall. Would that be okay? Yes. If I say tip, you will look at the tip. And if I say wall, you will look at the wall. Okay, let's do it. Tip, wall. Tip, wall. Okay, thank you for that. Also, you can assess accommodation by holding an object 10 cm away from the nose bridge of the patient and slowly bring the object that you're holding near to the nose bridge of the patient. 
Okay, ma'am. I want you to look at the tip of the pen light. Okay, thank you for that. So, to assess uh, peripheral visual field of the patient, distance yourself for about 2 to 3 feet and patient must able to see the object that you're holding or whatever you're doing in her or his periphery. Can you see this, mom? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes? Yes. This? Yes. Okay, thank you for that. So, to assess the extraocular muscle, again, distance yourself from the patient 2 to 3 feet and hold an object and instruct the patient to follow the object that you're holding. Okay, ma'am. Thank you for that. Okay. So, to assess the visual acuity of the patient, let the patient stand 9 inch away from the Snellen's chart and then instruct the patient to test one eye at a time. Start with the right eye and then cover the left eye and vice versa. Okay, ma'am. Can you cover your left eye for me and then read me? the chart, your right eye. For both eyes. Okay, ma'am. Let's test your both eyes. D, E, F, E, O, T, E, C. Okay, ma'am. That's all. Thank you. After documenting the right, left, and both eyes, um, provide a division test. This includes hand gestures and light perception. Okay, ma'am, I want you to identify where my finger is pointing. Up, left, down, right. Okay, thank you. Next is light perception. This test indicates if you need a prescription lenses to see properly. Can you see it? Yes. This one? Yes. This one? Yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Hi, ma'am. I'm Altea. And you are? Stephanie Mendoza. How would you like me to call you, ma'am? Steph. Okay, Miss Steph. So, for today, ma'am, I will be going to assess your ears and hearing. I want you to stay calm for me because this will serve as your... This will serve as your information about the current status of your ears. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Okay, great, ma'am. So before that, I want to confirm your biographical data. Is this your name? Yes. The age? Yeah. Your birth date? Yes. Okay, that's great, ma'am. So I'm here now at the patient's room. I wash my hands and provide the privacy of the patient. So, ma'am, before we start, I uh, want to ask some quick questions about your history. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Um, does any of your family member have a history of problem hearing or loss? None. Presence of any ear, ear problems? None. None. Any medication? Mm. Any hearing difficulty? None. Okay, great, ma'am. Okay, ma'am, so I will now inspect your ears. Would that be okay with you? Yeah. 
Okay, great. So first is inspect the articles for color, symmetry of size, and position. Okay, your lobes are being shaped. Thank you for that, ma'am. Next is palpate the articles for texture, elasticity, and areas of tenderness. Thank you. So next is using an otoscope, inspect the external ear canal for cerumen, skin lesions, pus, and blood. So today I will going to use a pen light for um, improvise because of insufficient instrument. Okay, ma'am, thank you. So, to test gross hearing acuity, assess the client's response to normal voice tones. So, Miss Steph, I will state three um, words and I want you to repeat after me. Heart, heart, bone, bone, throat, throat. Okay, thank you for that. Next is perform the watch Tick test. So have the client occlude one ear out of the client's sight. Place a ticking watch two to three centimeter away from the unoccluded ear. Okay, ma'am, I want you to occlude your ear. Ma'am? Then I will. Can you hear this, ma'am? Yes. Okay, great. On the other side, upload your ear. Can you hear this? Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So, to perform a tuning fork test, you will use a tuning fork. But today, I will use a fork because of insufficient instrument. Okay, ma'am, I will perform a Weber test. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Okay. Can you hear it, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Next is I will perform Renee test. Can you hear this, ma'am? Yes. Okay. How about this one? Yes. Okay, thank you for that, ma'am. Those I will test on your mastoid bone. Can you hear this, ma'am? Yes. How about this one? Yes. Okay, thank you for that, ma'am. That's all.